Welcome to the stream, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Iggy Kid on Twitch.tv. And now, introducing your host, from the 16-bit afterlife, weighing in at 273 kilobytes, assisted by the hands and voice of her mortal vessel, Iggy Kid. They are the ghost in the machine. The Electric Spectre, El Fantasma de la Electriciedad, we oh! Oops, I accidentally cut it off before the echo could go, but hey, everybody, three years, three years. It's been three years I've been streaming. If I had the ability, if I had the ability to uh, play a YouTube video, I'd play a little bit of my first stream, but frankly, you don't need to see it. It's on YouTube, you can just go to my stream archive and go uh, check it out. I played Stardew Valley. It was more of a test than anything. Whoa, whoa! It streams. Oh, hey, thanks for the support, everybody. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Twitchy Jason, I really appreciate it. And uh, that intro was so cool because it was by an actual uh, wrestling announcer that I know, Wade Preston Hunt, who offered to do it for free. And I was like, heck yeah, let's do it. It's pretty sick. Uh, yeah, I used to for a while, I was trying to just be a Mario Kart streamer, but uh, not great in Mario Kart, frankly. So it didn't go all that well. Uh, we're gonna be Birdetta now. But I'm gonna go with my usual loadout. And yeah, I'm just gonna crank through some of the the new cups. These two I haven't ground through yet, and I still, I think, need to get the 150cc on a lot of these. And I gotta get the 200cc on pretty much all of them. I, I barely cracked into the 200cc category. But I miss playing Mario Kart. It's been quite a while. I'm a little rusty. I did play this with a uh, family with, uh, yeah, just to try it out. And I, w I was doing very badly. Hey, thanks for the subscription, Danny Dude. Kid, uh, you have great streams. Whoops. Ah, crap, I missed the, <laughs> I missed my, my uh, thing, but it's fine. This is a 50cc, I'm gonna pull him out of the water. It doesn't really get tricky until 150cc. And then it's like, it's just kind of close. You can usually get it every few, uh, within like a handful of runs. It's mainly the annoying thing. It will just be that you miss it on like the, whoop, you miss like one first place and you can't get that three star trophy unless you get first place on all of them. What? Ah, dip, dip dang guru. Wah. Uh, yep. Nice. I'm very glad that they added, not only did they add Brodetta, uh, but they also, ah, uh, dip! No! Ah. Well, that's fine. It's still lap one. Uh, but they added a whole row of characters, so that means that they're gonna probably add you know, there's five question marks, so who are the five other characters going to be? We don't know yet, but they're there. I wish, I just wish with these new tracks that it wasn't all, uh, it's, it's almost exclusively just like at least one of the tracks in each of these new cups is going to be one of the Mario Kart Tour ones, and they're okay. I like how they switch them up with every lap, you know, it's not exactly the same thing, and it's you definitely get to see more of the area, but at the same time, uh, it's boring. It's just like Amsterdam, of course, or like what, Bangkok, whatever. It's like real world places, and it's like, that's kind of neat, but you guys can do anything. In fact, you have done anything. You've done like the ice cream town. The moon made of cheese. So I, I'd like to see more of that stuff, you know? I like the silly fantasy tracks a lot more. How do you, whoa, they're going backwards. Oh, geez, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, nope, nope. Ah. 
I think I'm at the point where I'm lapping everybody. Woo! Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, anybody, especially uh, Danny Dudes and Twitchy Jason, if you haven't, uh, join my Discord server, which is down below in the browser version, or I can actually just do the command here. Check it out. It's not, you know, crazy active, but people post in there. I always post up, like, when I go live and the recordings of my past streams. Uh, yeah. I feel like I should just be more active in there if I want people to be more active, but I'm busy. I'm in so many projects. I'm in, like, almost 25 projects. Granted, like, only a third of them are actually doing anything, but man, that's a lot. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, the 50cc, it ends up being kind of tedious because each track, because you're going so slow, takes so long, and there's so little actual uh, challenge to it, but it's it's still necessary if you want to get the 100%, of course. In fact, I'm curious if there's 100%. I don't think the battle mode counts for 100%, but I'd be into that too. I'm pretty pretty good at the battle mode, you know, at least among among the casuals. I'm sure a pro would wipe the floor with me. I think that was the big thing. When you're a kid, right, and you're playing games with just your family, you can be like, oh, I'm the best one at this game. I feel so cool. But then when you start playing, like, online with other, other people who actually are, like, good at it, it's like, it's pretty much guaranteed you're not the best at any game. And then, especially, like, I'll see some people where it's like, they're not even specifically a gamer. Like, that, it's just something they do for fun, and they're, like, incredible at it! They're, like, going nuts! Wrecking fools, and it's like... But I said, like, I could go... Hacks and leg. Yeah, well, I mean... I don't know. In general, it's just like, I thought I was a pretty alright gamer. I thought maybe above average, but... Playing with people online, it's like, I, I am average. Just straight down the middle, at best, if not a little below average, in terms of skills. Just because these games are hard. I don't know. I mean, my, my preferred... Uh, game format is like tabletop, like physical board games and stuff. I'm terrible at board games. I just like moving pieces around and watching the, watching the machinations work. I mean, I'm not gonna debate with them in chat. I'm just gonna leave. Why would I waste my time with someone who's clearly cheating? Like. If I, if I have any suspicion of that, I'm just gonna leave the, the game. Either go to a, a different room in the game, where I don't have to deal with them, or go to a different game entirely. Whoop. I mean, I don't even play online in general. Usually, if I play video games at all, it's on stream. Just because I don't have the time to play games casually most of the time. Whoa! So, yeah, I'm not really playing online unless it'd be with viewers, I guess. I should probably do that again sometime. I've done it with Mario Party, and I've done it with Jackbox, and I'm just... Uh, I don't know. I, I think just bringing in randos ends up being a recipe for disaster. Like with the, with Jackbox, did not go well. This is just immediately people dropping slurs into their stuff because only the newer Jackboxes will filter that stuff out. And um, yeah, with Mario Party, it's like it was fun enough, but it was like one of the players was just like a kid and he kept doing something that I think was just a reference to a slur and I was not super comfortable with that but I didn't know how to address it because 
out of nowhere, I wasn't positive exactly what he was referencing, so. Yeah, exactly. It's, that's the thing, Jackbox is very fun with friends, and the people who were being cool were super cool, and it was super fun. But yeah, it only takes like one, one piece of garbage who thinks it's funny to just throw slurs and, and negativity into your thing to just ruin it for everybody, so. That's great. <laughs> that's that's just the state of the internet, though. Uh-oh. It's fine. I'm so far ahead. Doesn't it? They're not even gonna come close. Did that say 100% organic antifreeze? I don't think that's accurate. Or is it? What is antifreeze? Is it just like a pile of man-made chemicals, or is it can it be naturally derived? I did hear. Don't quote me on this. And don't don't try and find out, but I have heard from people who made bad decisions that antifreeze tastes like Mountain Dew. But don't do that. It will kill you. It is poison. If you want something that tastes like Mountain Dew, it is drink Mountain Dew. But that's just like a little factoid. That's why a lot of alcohol companies will put, not literally antifreeze, but they'll put a chemical very similar to antifreeze into their drinks because it it smooths it out. It's like, that's not great. Yeah. Mountain Dew, well, yeah, I mean, traditional Mountain Dew is not great. I like Baja Blast, it's got that little lime edge. I don't really drink soda much. I, I don't really drink soda much in general. If I was gonna drink a citrus soda, I'd probably drink like Sprite or Starry. Starry soda's pretty good. That's like the new replacement for uh, Sierra Mist. And it's, yeah, it looks really cool. And it's, it's, it's hard to fix. I just don't do like a ton of sugar anymore. It's, it's, it's not very good for you, and it makes me just, I don't know, as I get older, I'm just like, ugh, it's so sugared out so fast. Ethanol and glycol, yeah. Well, ethanol is just, isn't that just another form of alcohol? Like, grain alcohol itself is like ethanol. Yeah, cherry cola is what I've been getting into lately. Um, I like peace tea because while it is a lot of sugar, it's like the it's a huge can That's still only the amount of sugar that you get in a standard can of soda now because sodas are really sugary now Like I remember as a kid it was like 20 ish Grams of sugar per can, but now it's like 40 plus in pretty much every soda It's pretty ridiculous Um, but yeah, I like, I like the, the Caddyshack piece of tea. That's the Arnold Palmer with the, uh, with the lemony. Um, also, Liquid Death. Hmm. Maybe it was the, the Caddyshack. Yeah, I like piece of tea a lot. In, in terms, like, compared to Arizona, Arizona is just like, eh. Not as into it. I did used to like their RX Energy Tonic. Uh, but then I saw how much sugar was in it. I was like, no, I cannot do that anymore. It's like 70 grams of sugar per can. And I used to drink like two of those a day. And would you believe it? I had digestive issues later in life. Um, Just peachy. They probably still have it. But uh, speaking of Arnold Palmer's and uh, peach teas, Liquid Death, the like water, the like canned water company, uh, they just recently re uh, started releasing tea. They do iced tea now, and it's like it's like six six grams of sugar per can, so it, it's like not quite as big as like an Arizona or a peach tea. 
Uh, it's only like 30 grams of caffeine, which is great because I'm so sensitive to caffeine now. Blech. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's just like very lightly sweet and they have, uh, they have, uh, resting peach, which is their, their peach tea. And it's, it tastes very peachy. Um, I'm not super big into peach, but I don't mind that one. It seems to be their least popular flavor because it's the only one that hasn't sold out. And, uh, let me hit it. Let me hit it. Ah, I know there's a secret if you hit that that uh, cloud that Coco set off last time you were playing. Or uh, my favorite of the Liquid Death uh, teas was Armless Palmer, which is their Arnold Palmer with a bit of lemon. And it's, yeah, I like it a lot. It's just like, ah, it's just uh, very, very lightly sweet. It's a touch of caffeine great way to start start your morning the big thing it's like it's not super expensive it's like 17 bucks for a case of eight of them and they're big cans you know uh it's it's just they're sold out like since they came out they're sold out and their shipping sucks like the the box they ship it in is super thin and they did not have any like packaging like any padding so like, one of the, like every time you get it, the cans are all like busted up and like full of dents. Oh, oh, let me get it, let me get it. Yeah, there it is, there it is. Um, shortcut. Woo! Uh, and in the case of the second box I got, one of them was busted, one of them was actually broken open. And I had to get a replacement, and I only got a replacement because it was the peach ones, and they weren't sold out. Apparently, all the sold out ones, you were just out of luck. You couldn't get a refund or a replacement or anything. So, not a great launch, but I like them a lot. Like, I really, really like them. So, I'll get more when they go back in stock, but it's looking like not until at least April. And they have sparkling waters that are pretty good. The sparkling waters are good because they actually have just a touch of sugar. Just like three grams of sugar. Which is like barely anything, but it's just enough to make it not like completely underwhelming the way uh the way like a LaCroix is. Okay. Took us about 18 minutes. Get through that one. So yeah. Just gonna keep cranking through. When I hit the 150 CC, it's definitely gonna be some backtracking to some of the other ones, Le Croix. Well, yeah, that's the thing is the actual actual pronunciation would be La Croix because first off, it's the French all, which is not like a rrr. And yeah, it makes a qua sound, not the gui. Which be La Croix. Where? Um. Which, yeah, I was. I'm putting together a D and D character for someone's campaign, and I'm I'm playing a a gay John character, so I needed to give him a French name, of course. So I was looking up a lot of French names, and uh, yeah, the pronunciation. It's not that hard to get, but it is definitely something that you gotta spend some time wrapping your brain around. The first time you see some of the words. Oh, ah, ah. Like his, uh, his name is Gilbert Marais Ami, which Marais is spelt uh, M-A-R-I-S. Which I would have figured was pronounced Marai. But, uh, no, that's not how it ends up working. It's Marai. Whoa! Saw a green shell coming at me. I know what happened. It looks like it's okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to play that character. It keeps getting pushed back. 
Um, like, we were supposed to do our first session of that that campaign on Tuesday, but then one of the players uh, lost their voice, like, completely, apparently, so had to postpone it to this upcoming Tuesday. Should be interesting. I mean, I'm not super big into D&D. I love role-playing games. I just don't like, uh... First off, it's so hard to actually get into them. Because it's just so much effort. Like, I end up being a DM most times just because it's, you know, it's the most work. And if you want to convince people to play in your campaign, or play at all, you kind of got to do the most work. Boink. Boink. Yeah. Nice. Um. The. Yeah, the main problem with D&D is that it's just a little over complex. While, uh, like, the crunch is too deep. And the role-playing is... Oh, come on. From the other side... SMH. And the role-playing is a little too shallow? Like, the system is really heavy on the combat. And the combat is so, like... Complicated. Like, it's not that you can't get your head around it. It's just, it's spread out in such a way that it's like... Remembering everything. is such a pain. Um... And yeah, it really doesn't... It's not that it doesn't allow role-playing, but it definitely... It's definitely clear that the actual role-playing side was more of an afterthought over the actual, like... The, 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 the grind... The crunch of the... Combat, especially, you know, in 4th edition. 5th edition is effectively, what if 4th edition stole a bunch of stuff from better indie RPGs. Like, a lot of the stuff they took is things that were taken directly from Burning Wheel, which is just a much better medieval fantasy uh, tabletop RPG. Uh, and of course, the, the big fan favorite now in the indie crowd is Powered by the Apocalypse. Which is, it's just such a more elegant system, and the focus is so much more heavily on actual role-playing. Like, even if you're not, in, like, combat isn't the only answer. And I know you, there's like, there's probably situations in Venus where like, oh, I intimidated a guy. It's like, yeah, I guess. But that wasn't, like, an encounter. That wasn't, like, a fun thing that happened. That was just, like, a moment of, like, I do this, roll. Yeah, you did it. Like, there's no s scenarios happening. Where you're, like, where you're... Uh... Taking the time to actually intimidate them in, like, a whole scene. Um, also, I, I only learned recently that the coins actually help your speed. I did not know that, but yeah, it's, uh, if you have a full 10 coins, you will go faster. Which explains a lot of why I didn't do super great when I used to post stream this. Storytelling takes patience, I guess, but it's like, if you're sitting down for four hours of an RPG at a stretch, like, presumably you are in, wanting to get into the, the weeds of storytelling. Like, with Powered by the Apocalypse, the main thing is that, God, like, uh, in D&D, right, most of your rolls are going to be with a D20. Aside from, like, damage rolls. And it's going to be, you know, success or fail. 
Unless it's like, unless it's a strength check, then it's a roll under. And also, that's... <sighs> like, if you're trying to like go off a table or something, maybe you need to be as granular as 20 options. But in reality, if you're doing a skill check, the options are much simpler than like, oh, there's 20 degrees of success. It's like, no, really there's three degrees of success. There's, or er, four, four. There's four degrees of success. There's utter critical failure. There's failure. There's success. And there's uh, incredible, overwhelming success. Like, uh, ooh, here we go. Pachow! Nice. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's it. So really, you could do all of it with a D4. And just say three is a success, four is a crit success, two is a failure, one is a... Th and it's like, it, that doesn't seem as fun, right? But it's like, that's pretty much all it boils down to, just because you're obfuscating it by using a larger dice doesn't mean that it's actually that, like, nuanced. Powered by the Apocalypse gets that. So, Powered by the Apocalypse, it's straight up. They're just like, yes, it's, it's just success, failure. Uh, it's like, great success, success, failure, horrible failure, and, like, they tell you, like, basically there'll be, like, three aspects, and depending on how well you do, you, uh, you might end up with the DM choosing a lot of aspects in a way that's gonna actually mess you up, right? Like, an example they had is, like, maybe you're, if you're trying to open a door, maybe if you roll a failure, you still open the door, but then on the other side is a bunch of the guards you were trying to avoid. So actually, it's just putting you out of the frying pan and into the fire. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So. Whoop. Like, the, the, there's options for stuff like that. It's just, it encourages creative storytelling in a way that D&D allows for, but doesn't encourage, if that makes sense. And I know, I've had conversations with people where they're like, well, I had a great D&D campaign, and it's like, yeah, you, you did, but that's not, that's not because D&D is a great campaign, it's because you are creative. You did, you had a great campaign in spite of D&D, you know? You, you were able to do great stories regardless of what D&D was trying to pigeonhole you into. And that's awesome, and I'm glad you had fun with that. Like, I am a big proponent of playing, like, if you engage genuinely with bad games, or even, like, games that, not even bad games, I'll say, uh, poorly designed games, that's valid. That's totally valid, and uh, the engagement that you had was real. Like, that's, you had a good time, and it's, uh, it doesn't mean just because the game is not as strong as it could have been doesn't take that away, but at the same time, it would be cool if the game was better. But that would mean that everybody could have a great time and not just the people who are willing to persevere, th persevere through the roughness, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I guess, you know, D&D, &D, it laid a foundation for a lot of that. Like, even the idea of a tabletop RPG of, like, basically collaborative improvised storytelling with randomizer elements. Like, that's what a tabletop RPG is in the end. Um, and that's, uh, that's really clever. Like, that concept in general is really neat. And D&D, &D, 
you know? Especially, like, the fact that it came out in, like, the 70s. Like, they had that idea. They had that idea right away. That's awesome, but... Th it's just that, like, it was the first one. And there's so much room for improvement, and there has been so much improvement. And it's like, even within D&D, like, 5th edition is certainly one of the best editions. Like, I can understand enjoying older D&D because of the simplicity, right? Because, like, modern D&D is very complicated. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot happening. Um, and heck, there's even people who still prefer, like, 4th edition, even though now it's, it's pretty much, like... The consensus, from my understanding, is that it's not, it wasn't great. Like, it was just kind of like, it was over, I keep saying overcomplicated, but it's, it's true. Like, no, 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 oh, I don't want to have to go through 50cc again. No, Mario, get back here. Um, like, There's just so much going on, and there's so much you have to remember, but in the end, it's not... Nah, there's really not that much happening. Like, on your turn, there's really only so much you can do. It's like the, the potential is there, but the gameplay loop itself is not fun, for the most part. A lot of the gameplay loop is very bare bones, just like, you do the one thing that you can do and you move, and like, that's it. And like, later on, it does get more interesting and more complex, which is cool, but, like, I don't know. I, I, it's also that, like, there are not a ton of D&D characters or campaigns that the average person is gonna play that gets past that. Most people play, like, an introductory sec session or two. They don't, yeah, they don't end up playing, like, a full campaign where they get to see the fruits of their character come together. And that's really a shame. Whereas, like, in Powered by the Apocalypse or a lot of other stuff, it's like... If you don't get into a fight, you still have so much that you do, and there's so much interesting stuff to do, and it, like, makes you want to embody your character and, like, build them up. Like, that's my goal with my character for this campaign, is that I want a character who has room for development, who is, like, fleshed out enough to be interesting, but then will also go, go places and change. Maybe for the better, maybe for the worse, I don't know. But yeah, storytelling takes patience, but, like, that's what tabletop RPGs are. They are storytelling, like... They're just collaborative storytelling that's improvised with randomizers to force you to sometimes have bad stuff happen. Like, that's the point of the dice. The, the, the point is so that sometimes you roll bad and then you're forced to th have a bad thing happen to your characters. Because most people's inclination is like to not let bad stuff happen or to let too much bad stuff happen if they're like a killer DM. So, I don't know. It's, it's a long rant. I recommend watching, um, I'd recommend watching, uh, oh wow, I didn't even get through 100cc on some of those. Really? I'd recommend watching, uh, Beyond D&D &D on Rim DeCoster's channel on YouTube. It's a panel that the Geek Knights did for quite a while. And it's literally, it's just talking about, like, it explains why D&D is not great. And then it goes through a ton of other interesting indie RPGs that are worth trying. One of them that I really want to try is, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's this one, it's, like, based on, like, Thousand... Thousand and One Nights, and it's basically like you're just all of the people in a sultan's court, right? And uh, it encourages you to like lay out pillows and like have like dates and 
peeled grapes and all sorts of like, just really get into it. And the idea is that you're all telling stories, right? So you, you have the overarching story of what's happening in the Sultan's court and all of your relationships and you're required every character you have to have uh something about them that you admire or that you're jealous of so that you all have friction and uh then when you tell the stories you play the characters you play your character in the Sultan's Court, playing one of the characters in the story. So you're playing two characters, and according to the Geek Knights, it's like, no matter, like, it sounds like it's complicated, but it's like, you will not forget the names of all of the characters, because they will be so well done. Uh, and then, and the thing is, everything is done through questions. Right? So it's like, no matter, if you ask a question, they have to yes and you. It's improv. So, like, one thing that the Geek Knights said is, like, um, they, they were in the middle of a story, and someone said to the person telling the story, uh, was the assassination attempt successful? And there was no, like, no, there was no mention of that before, and they almost said, like, there wasn't an assassin. Mm? No, it's in the rules. You have to now incorporate that into your story. That is so cool. That's the kind of thing I love about improv, about storytelling, about like RPGs in general. Like that's what I want to see. Or, like they have another one. It's called I think Lady Blackbird, and it's like a it's like a steampunk airship thing. But the idea is that you're all together as part of this crew, and then when stuff goes wrong, instead of rolling, what you do, or like you start with basically like a blank character. And then when you're in, like, the thick of things, you turn to each other and you say, hey, this reminds me of that one time that this happened. And then you flash back to another adventure that you've already had. And you have a... A, uh... Uh... You, you gain stuff from that adventure and you have, like, a little side story. A little side adventure. It's super cool. It makes me think of uh, The Longest Five Minutes, which is a game I haven't played yet. I played the game they made before that, and I adored it. A Half Minute Hero, which Half Minute Hero is uh, an RPG, like, you know, I'm trying not to use this term anymore, but a JRPG kind of thing, like a Final Fantasy, where you have 30 seconds to get through each world. Like, get through the world, defeat the boss, all of that, 30 seconds, right? And it's like, obviously, you're going to run out of time. So, the goddess of time can give you blessings that you have to pay for, and they get more expensive every time you use it. So, while you can keep paying and you can keep paying, eventually, you're going to run out of money. There's a finite amount of money in the kingdom that you can get to pay. So, it's like, it becomes, instead of an RPG, it's a like a puzzle game of trying to figure out how to make this run work. How do you survive this 30 seconds? And it's, it's awesome, and it has four modes. It's like Half Minute Heroes is the first one, but then there's like Half Minute Evil Lord, who's like one of the bosses from the Half Minute Hero campaign. You get to play as him, and it's like an RTS. You got Half Minute Princess, and it's like a shmup. Uh, you got Half Minute Knight, I think was the last one. I never finished that one because at that point I was a little burnt out. Um... And like, yeah, that was like a weak one to end on. I think they should have ended on Half Minute Princess because that one, I feel like after the more slog of the other ones, that would have been a nice, refreshing way to finish it. Uh, but yeah, they, they made another game called The Longest Five Minutes and it's literally you start at the final boss and everything's going bad. And it's basically just you keep flashing back and playing the game fully in flashback one chunk at a time. And it just keeps going and keeps going, and it's just, ah, oh, I, I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm, I'm super excited for that. I gotta play Half Minute Hero on the stream someday, because that, I, I loved that. It was PSP originally, but I have it on Steam. Uh, and I think it's on Switch. If it's not, I'll probably just play it on Steam. It's, it's very, like, retro, pixely thing, so it probably won't be very, uh... 
it probably won't be very intensive on the the old computer. Hold on, I'm gonna turn this down. Looks like my audio's been kind of high for the game. That's the thing, is that trying to balance the audio without the auto duck is a little tricky because uh, sometimes they'll have weird peaks that pop way too loud. But what can you do? Oh yeah, Calamari Desert. I love this one. Uh, Mario Kart 64 was the Mario Kart I grew up with. I remember as a kid, like I had an N64. Whoops. But then, um, the McDonald's in the town I grew up in during elementary school, we would go there sometimes, and at the play place, they had three TVs, right? Or maybe it was just two, but they had a couple of big CRTs set up with N64s. Um, and they had Mario Kart 64 and original Smash on 64 set up in the in the McDonald's and so I just played him to death get got get got now, how am I second I guess I wasn't really paying much attention ah it has been quite a few three years just thinking back like when I first <laughs> in my first stream or at least like in my first streams like, my friend showed up in the comments, and it's like we were talking about, like, the beginnings of the pandemic. And, like, that's the thing is I started... I didn't start because of the pandemic. I was planning on streaming forever. It was just that my... My, uh... My internet was not very good for a long time, so I couldn't do it. And then when we finally got better internet, I started streaming. And... Pretty much right after I started streaming, the pandemic hit, and streaming went crazy because everybody was like, oh, well, I guess I'll do some streaming. And it's like, come on. Ah, this was supposed to be my chance, or whatever. It's good. I've seen, like, other people. Some streamers I didn't even realize started during the pandemic, like Pinksel, who I raid over to pretty often. I thought she'd been streaming for quite a while, but she's actually... She started slightly after me. She started like a few months after I did. And she's doing a lot better. Oh, a lot better than I am, which is fun. If, that's the thing is, if I didn't enjoy streaming, I wouldn't do it. I would just play games. But, you know, I can't say it's not disheartening to see other people blast past me in terms of like stuff. What am I doing wrong? But it's, it's really not that big a deal. I don't plan on being like a full-time streamer. It'd be cool if I could, but it's it's pie in the sky stuff, you know. You have to be real good to stand out, and it's like I'm I'm fine. It's like I'm I I I like to think that I'm pretty entertaining. You know, make of that what you will. And I know I'm not great at games, but I do my best. So I. I, I definitely can understand why I haven't necessarily popped off. I don't really have any any memeable. I I haven't done any major memeable viral moments or anything. I gotta get back to to editing together my highlight compilations. Cause like I was doing them for a while. Um. And I got a couple done. They're just so much work. So much work. It's like, it's cool, it looks awesome, but then like, so few people were watching them. Granted, it was also, I started doing them well before I was like, in a ton of projects. I feel like if I, if I started doing them again in these projects and showed them off, a lot more people would be like, whoa, that was pretty neat. Yeah, I do have the PNG tuber. She do slow down my video though. So it's like my audio is still good, but my video is like ooh, not so great. Pikmin and McDonald. Yeah, uh 
they never got a GameCube there, at least as far as I know. And I, I never had a GameCube. Uh, well, I didn't have a GameCube when they came out. I bought one later in life. And I think I ended up giving it to... Yeah, I gave it to my little brother. Uh, yeah. Yeah, N64 was big for me. My little brothers had a GameCube, which I played every now and then. I had a PS2. Uh, mostly played Kingdom Hearts on it. Yeah, I always... I always got whatever games I could get. I was mostly... Like, dang it, yeah. I want that double, double item. Ooh. I was uh, pretty much always like a handheld kid because handhelds were always cheaper and I was always like on the move traveling or, you know, we moved a lot, a lot, a lot. So, you know, didn't always have like time to sit down at a TV. So having just like a Game Boy, or a Game Boy Advance, or a DS. Game Boy Advance still, I think, is like peak, peak gaming. I think, I, I love the, the Switch, but the Switch is really just a console that you can take around with you. It doesn't really feel like a handheld in the way that, um, like, the Game Boy Advance did, or even the PSP. The PSP, I think, was a really great console that got hamstrung by just not having a huge library. But, like, it ended up being great for, like, PlayStation ports, so I ended up playing a lot of original PlayStation games I hadn't played before. You know, I finally got to beat Spyro. Got to play Ape Escape. Like, I got to play Final Fantasy VII. Because, like, I, I had played some PlayStation. I played, like, the demo discs. Thanks, Reggie. Reggie fils -Aimé. Oh my god, his book is probably out by now. I gotta get Reggie fils -Aimé's book. Uh, gaming consoles. Yeah, Best Buy or like Walmart. When they used to have like the big CRTs above. They don't have that anymore. Walmart, even like GameStop doesn't really have like the, the demo stations like they used to. But yeah, that was, that was the only time I ever saw them at McDonald's, but that was the one I went to all the time as a kid, so. And then DS Lite with the Game Boy thing on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. DS Lite was pretty good, too. Like, the DS was pretty good, but it was very gimmicky, right? Like, it wasn't... And it wasn't even in, like, a bad way. It's just that they always had to have some kind of touch controls. But, like, there's some really good games on DS. Uh, Phantom Hour... Like, Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass is one of the better Zelda games, I think, still. And, yeah, it's fully touchscreen controlled. And people point out, it's like, oh, it's very DS. But it's like... Is that a bad thing? I think... I think Phantom Hourglass was the one that utilized the touch controls in a way that none of the others really could. Punk. Uh, WarioWare Touched on the DS. That was, uh, that was so good. That was a game that was so good that even my mom played it. Although, I don't know why I always think of my mom as not much of a gamer. Like, she, she never games now, but like, a lot of my gaming memories involved her. Like when I was uh, when I was like a little little kid, and my parents were still together. Uh, it's Sega Genesis. We had a Sega Genesis, and we had Sonic the Hedgehog. And I remember I would play Sonic the Hedgehog with my mom, and we would like count out how many times you had to hit Robotnik in the first level, which was eight. And like that was like a way to teach me how to count. That was nice. I remember one day because I could never get past Spring Yard Zone. Because, like, it was already so hard for a small child. And then the boss. Oh, the boss in Spring Yard Zone is so difficult. Even today, I'm like, that. it's like a crapshoot of whether or not you're going to get screwed over or getting stuck and falling down into death. Um, yeah, I remember one day 
when I woke up, she was like, hey, I got it. I got to the fourth world and it's like a labyrinth thing. And I was like, what, really? And that's so, ah, oh, that was cool. Uh, I remember even before that, my mom had like, she got a Game Boy Color with Link's Awakening. And I, <laughs> I almost broke it because I put the cartridge in like backwards, like with the label facing in. Um, which I'm pretty sure they were able to get it back out because like I, I somehow jammed it pretty far in. I remember that, but it, I'm pretty sure it worked out. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, WarriorWare like touched. She played that whole game um, on my DS. That was the point. That was the point where I had lost the stylus to my DS, and uh, I just used a pencil which was not a good idea. I did not have a screen protector or anything, so I scraped the ever-living Christ out of the bottom touchscreen of my original DS. It was, it was like, it was so scraped up that it was like a disc, basically like a layer of just scraped material that you couldn't see through. That was a bad idea, but whatever. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Come on. Speed up. Okay. So I'm trying to read chat, but it's also... I got a race. I got a race. Whoa. Ah, uh, my coins. My coins. I was gonna use those. We're good. Oh yeah, GBA player for GameCube must have been great. A similar, I remember as a kid staying over my cousin's house and watching him play through like Arkanoid on uh, the like the Game Boy thing, like the Super Game Boy for SNES, and then also like uh, Sonic 3D Blast, and we listened to like a Pokemon album that had like a weird love song from Misty to Ash. I never understood that. Like they, I don't remember them ever characterizing that at all. Um, and like a Simpsons album that had just like a bunch of the songs from the show. Yeah, just staying up super late and watching through all of that. Uh. Yeah, I hear that the the original DS had some some real brittle hinges. I just yeah, mine. I don't know. I I never had any hinge problems. It was mainly just that the screen got completely unusable. And at that point, it was like I got the the DS Lite, and it's like it was it was just nicer. It was a nicer package. Felt a bit better in the hand. It wasn't so massy. Although actually, I think the original DS probably felt better in the hand. Um, I don't know. I like how when I was in high school, I found my old Game Boy Color, and when I picked it up, I was shocked at how fat they were. Like, they're, they're so much smaller and so much thicker than you remember them being. But then I ended up playing, like, uh, Donkey Kong on Game Boy, which if you haven't played Donkey Kong on Game Boy, like original Game Boy, dude... Get on top of it, because the first four levels, the first world, is, uh, is basically Donkey Kong, the arcade game, right? With the, like, you know, you hop over the barrels and everything, but then it keeps going. That's the first world of, like, eight, and each level gets more and more complex. It's like, you gotta get, like, uh, Peach's, like, stuff, you gotta get, like, her umbrella, and at first, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> seemed a little stereotypical um but to get like extra points and mario can do all sorts of like he can do like a handstand and like a backflip and like all sorts of like stuff he can like spin on wires to like go up higher and it, it just got more and more complex and there was like keys that open doors and the last level is such like oh god the second to last level is so hard because the way that the keys work, um, uh, hold on, let me read chat before I get too deep into that. 
used to chew. Yeah, I didn't chew on the tip of the stylus, but I chew on the the backside, which had the nub that like held it in, and ended up just like breaking that part, which is why I lost it because it just fell out. Oh God, yeah, Pokemon Ranger with the spinning in circles. Woo. Yeah, never never lost any hinges, but I did the rest of the stuff for sure. Um but yeah, how in Donkey Kong for Game Boy, how the keys worked is you would pick it up and you would have to bring it to the door, right? But you couldn't like uh you couldn't climb with it. You could jump, but you couldn't climb ladders or anything. Uh Yes, yeah, that thing I chewed the ever looking crap out of that nub. It just completely, completely fell apart. I don't know. It was also back in those days, it was like I didn't even think about that stuff. Nowadays, I'm so neurotic about keeping my stuff nice. But back in the day, I was just like, eh, whatever. It's just a toy. I'll treat it like a toy. Now I'm like, it's not a toy, it's a collectible. It's like, I'm not gonna resell my video game systems. Like, I still have my original 3DS, but, like, I'm not gonna be able to resell it. And also, I never got the, the XL, which I've always wanted to, but now they're kinda hard to get. Um. Thinking. Right, so you, the, the keys in Donkey Kong on original Game Boy, they would, uh, you would have to throw them, right? And you could throw them up. So it wasn't that hard, but it was a little clunky. And when you threw them, there would be a timer of how long it would be before the key disappeared, right? And it was usually like three to five seconds. But as the it got more complicated in the later levels, they could be as much as like, uh, they could be like over a minute and it would be like super complicated. So the last, the last, uh, second last level in Donkey Kong on Game Boy is there's a key that has 99 seconds, the longest that the that it possibly could, that you have to throw on a slow moving conveyor belt and then go through like this obstacle course to get to it before it disappeared. And it's like, if you played optimally, you had like two seconds to grab it. It was so hard. And it took me so many tries to get it right. I hope, I really hope that goes to Nintendo Switch Online because I love that game and I really think that that, that particular level is gonna be very fun to stream. Oh, 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 oh. It's gonna get me. I got, got. All right, next up is, I think the ice cream. I think the next one is the ice cream. Ah, it's nice to have the PNG tube over there, uh, mainly because it means that I don't have a bright light in my face to make myself visible. But yeah, GBA, especially GBA SP, there was something cinematic. It, it's hard to describe. When I worked at the Nintendo warehouse in Kirkland, uh, back during the Wii U launch. Um, they they would do, they did an employee garage sale, they called it, where basically they just, in the break room, or it was like a conference room, but they basically just laid out tables and tables of like old stock Nintendo, like, like old new stock Nintendo stuff. So like unopened like shirts, and like promotional stuff, keychains, pins, and it was all like crazy cheap. It was like a box full of like full on Nintendo pins for like 15 cents a piece. And I got, it. this was in like 20, this would have been 2012. I got a GBA SP, Coral Pink GBA SP in box, unopened for $25. It was, awesome and when I had it I I realized like wow yeah there's and like they had a ton of GBA SP games and stuff for like five bucks a piece still in box uh, and so I uh, 
uh, playing that, I was just like, wow, it, the way that the screen is like set back, and the the way that I, I don't even think it was backlighting. I think that the model I had was the front light original one, and I just yeah, that, it was so so fun to go back to that, and I'm very happy that Nintendo Switch Online is doing GBA. I wish they'd be a little faster with the, the ones coming out, but they got some of the good ones, you know. They got Minish Cap, which I never finished, and I only ever played an emulation. Um, they got... They got Mario Kart uh, Super Circuit, which is the best Mario Kart. It's real hard, but it's really good. And... They, find, they got Metroid Fusion, which is like the best Metroid. Metroid Dread was really good too, to be fair, but like Metroid Fusion was the point where it was finally like good. Because Metroid is such a weird series. There was original Metroid on NES, which is very clunky. It's very difficult to navigate if you don't already know what you're doing, because, you know, NES. Like, the original Zelda was like that too. Uh. And but original, yeah, original Metroid was on NES. Metroid 2 was on Game Boy, so a lot of people didn't even play it because they didn't realize that it was officially the sequel. I borrowed it from my uncle, right? My uncle let me play, and I just, I could never figure out where to go. I'd, I'd always get stuck. I could never figure out how I was supposed to advance. I'd get to, like, one spot where I knew where a secret, like, missile capsule was, and then I'd get, like, eaten by Metroids. Every time. Nice. Now we're cranking through these. A little over an hour. Nice. Um... Then Super Metroid on SNES was Metroid 3, as it says at the beginning. Then... Metroid Fusion on GBA was Metroid 4. And that was the one... Super Metroid is good. I played it on stream, I did it as a marathon, so you can watch the whole thing. It's over on my archive channel. Um... But the the big issue with that is just the controls are not great. Like, especially the wall jumps. They don't expect you to do them more than once, the wall jumps. But, and in fact, I think it's technically optional if you don't go to that area. But yeah, the wall jumps are just, they're impossible. They're impossible. Like, in that stream, I literally had to... Basically, because I was playing it on the Switch, thank goodness, one of the viewers, uh, I let them take control, like, over the online thing, because that's one of the cool things you can do with Nintendo Switch Online. And they did the wall jump for me to get me out of there, because I was losing my mind at how difficult it was. But then, like, every other thing, like the space jumps, I was like, it wasn't too bad. But yeah, fusion. Fusion was pretty ridiculous. And it, well, Fusion was good. What I'm saying is, like, Fusion is where it took all the good stuff from uh, Super Metroid and, like, polished it and made it, like, doable, right? Similarly, uh, Metroid Zero Mission, which is just a remake of the first one, is pretty good. Like, if you're gonna experience the first game, that's the way to do it. Um, but... That little bit that they tack onto the end... That is cool. It's a super cool idea, and that's where Zero Suit Samus comes from. Um... It's just... Yeah, it's a little rough. It's a, especially, like, the very ending, it's like, dude... I had to use save states because it was like, how do they expect you to do this? Like, legit. I don't know. And then Metroid Dread is Metroid 5. So it's it's a very long series. Um, but yeah, Metroid Dread was really good. I... I 
I don't know, I always wish that my series of doing Metroid Dread had gotten more views because it was such a good game. Like this, it was such a good series and I was having such a good time with it. But uh, not a lot of people watched. I think it's because I, I did it the weekend that it came out and like most of my viewers who were into Metroid were probably playing it for themselves. You know? So, I don't know. But it, it's, I'd say go go watch watch my Metroid. Because that's the thing is, before Metroid... Yeah, I've done several, like, marathon, like, series. I, 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 like, where I would play, like, all of a series leading up to a new series. Like, before Metroid Dread came out, I played all of the Metroid games. Um... The, uh, except for Metroid 2, I didn't end up, I didn't end up playing that one because it, the only decent one, as far as I could tell, was on 3DS, and there's not a lot of easy ways to stream 3DS. I don't have a capture card, and they're really hard to get now. Should've got one a while ago, but whatever. Hindsight, um, whoop. Wow, going down. Okay. Uh, and the, oh, what was it? Uh, before Paper Mario came out, I did like a Paper Mario marathon. Granted, that didn't go super well because my original idea was to do Paper Mario, then Thousand Year Door, then, and then, you know, be set up to do, uh, and then Super Paper Mario. But as it turns out, I could not. My computer just can't handle streaming GameCube emulation. So that didn't work out. But I ended up doing uh, Mario RPG from SNES, which was a good game. I did like that, but I couldn't beat it. I just couldn't. I got to like the snake that's right at the end, and I just could not beat them. Like literally, Every single attack they were doing was like my entire health. It was all one hit KOs. And the only advice anybody could give was like, you've got to put in Peach to heal. And it's like, it doesn't matter if I have Peach to heal because everybody gets one hitted. So it's like, if I'm, I, there's nothing to heal, they're dead. So I don't know. I don't know what I did. I guess maybe I should have ground more, but I hate grinding, dude. And I, you know, weirdly controversial take. Grinding is bad. Grinding is bad design. I, I think if your game requires grinding, like if you want to grind, it's totally cool. That's your decision as a player, that's valid. If you design a game where grinding is required, that is a crutch as a game designer. You did not, you did not balance your game well. Like, if I can't just go through the game playing as normal without having to go back and just grind away at a part, unless that's, like, literally built into the story, then I don't think you made a great game. Because, like, grinding... Uh, grinding is not even the most efficient way, usually, to get better. It's just, like, the most intuitive, right? Which I think is how Folding Ideas put it in one of his WoW videos. Uh, because it's like, it's definitely not compelling gameplay, it's very dull, and it's, you know, there's probably a, a, there are definitely better ways to level up, both in terms of entertainment and just like actually, like, doing it, like it'll, it'll be quicker, but grinding is just obvious, it's like, well, if I keep going, uh, if I keep grinding away at this, it, I will eventually get there. It's just my time, and it's like, well, your time is your most valuable thing, because all of your game resources are, you know, they're renewable. Your time, that's the only thing that's not renewable, because that's your life as a human person in this world. Ugh, whatever. I got all the controversial takes for you. Here's another one. Monopoly? Not that bad. I don't hate Monopoly. I think Monopoly, the way that it's played, you know, with all the house rules and stuff, with the free parking and whatever, makes it worse. But, 
I don't think it's terrible. I have played much worse modern games, modern board games, than Monopoly. Some of them I haven't played because literally they're unplayable the way that they're, the rules are written. And, you know, I think that that's a much bigger sin than Monopoly. That's It's playable, you know? It's definitely, it's a very mean game. I, I think, should I get into that? I, I just, I, I've been, I've had on the back burner for a long time a video series I want to do of uh, just like going through games that are cons board games, classic board games that are considered like bad, analyzing you know why why people don't like them, what the issues are, like what are the perceived issues, what do people think is wrong with them, what is actually wrong with them. Uh, what newer editions have fixed them because there are newer editions of Monopoly that are actually they make it way better Way better like they're not all just like what if we just slapped like the Adventure Time guys on it like sometimes they do have versions that are just like Significantly different in fact One of my favorites is Monopoly Gamer which is uh, like a Mario one that the, like it adds boss fights and it constricts it to like six goes around the board or no not say I think there's eight but it basically it makes it so that there's a built-in timer so you don't just go until everybody's bankrupt you go until all the bosses have been fought and that's good because that's one of the biggest issues is how long it takes to play um but yeah and then I would finish it by proposing like this is how I would design it you know just like kind of basically saying like <clears throat> this is how I would lean into the strengths and here how I'd minimize the like weaknesses to cr kind of like create a new game that could still be considered similar enough that people could be into it yeah there's a lot of theme monopolies <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, that's sick. Yeah, the Ghostbusters one plays the song. Uh, they had a Jurassic Park one recently where when you pass go, there's like the Jurassic Park archway and you gotta push the button on it. And if it plays the Jurassic Park theme, you're good, you're safe. But if it plays the, if it plays the T-Rex roar, then you like, you like lose stuff. And that's, I like that. I like little gimmicky stuff like that. Yeah, I, I posted pictures um, when I, I reorganized my board games last. I organized them by color, and I was like, well, that's pretty visually interesting. So I shared it around in the various board gaming discords and communities I'm in. <laughs> and everybody's first question was, why do you have, like, four Monopolies? <laughs> and joke's on them, I have six Monopolies, actually. I have, um... Hold on, let me see if I can break them down while racing. I have classic Monopoly for playing with family. Because it's like, it's 20 bucks. Just You can just have standard Monopoly. You know? Why not? Um, then uh, I have... I had Monopoly Cheaters Edition, which I sold because it was, it was fine. It was kind of cute. Like, the, you know, there was like, when you were in jail, you had to like actually handcuff one of your hands to the board with like a little plastic handcuff and like there were goals that got you extra money where you could uh where you had to cheat and it was it was fun enough but i wasn't gonna play it again probably uh, monopoly gamer i have because like i said it's it's pretty decent you know it's not it's still monopoly and actually i'd say the biggest flaw of monopoly gamer is that the new mechanics really put all of the real estate and like property stuff, like the core of the game, it really puts it by the wayside. Uh, like, it's it's so much of an afterthought because it's like, well, this Monopoly, so you have to buy stuff, but it's like, th that stuff barely matters. Whether or not you get the boss fights is really what ends up mattering. Um,. But I have it, and it th with that they did like booster packs, where you could get more characters, 
right? Like Fireball Mario, Tanuki Mario, you could get Boo, you could get all. So when I got it, we were actually, we were on evacuation for a, uh, for a hurricane at the time. And we were like holed up in a hotel, I don't know, somewhere north in one of the Carolinas, I think. Uh, and we went by GameStop just to see what they had. And they had Monopoly Gamer, and they had, like, all of the stuff. So I was like, well, just get all of this. And, yeah, I got the full collection. And now it's actually really hard to get a lot of them. Like, Tanuki Mario is kind of rare and difficult to get because they stopped selling him. Hey, what the... I hit the button to do it back. I guess it didn't work. Um... Yeah, I don't mind that. And they've made other Monopoly gamers. They made Mario Kart. They made Sonic. And they made Overwatch. None of which are that great. I kind of want the Sonic and the Mario Kart ones. Kind of. But it's like, really, I think the, the collector's edition of the full set that I have, that's probably the best one. The other ones look okay. But, you know, whatever. Um, I am just curious what the boss fights are more than anything. I could probably just find gameplay of them online. Uh, okay, I have those two. What other ones do I have? I have Animal Crossing Monopoly, which is mostly for the the figures. The little figures in them are very cute. The game itself is okay. It's about like buying up furniture and stuff, so that's neat, but... It's also super tedious to set up because there's a million different tokens that you gotta separate. Um, I got Monopoly Di I Roll Dice. It's like a dice version. It's okay. It's just, it's very much just like a, a Yahtzee with a Monopoly theme kind of thing. It's okay. I got it because it was very cheap. Um, I have a Polish Monopoly that's still in shrink wrap that my dad it's from like the 90s, and my dad found it recently at a thrift store still in shrink wrap, so that's cool. Um, I'm not gonna open it, because I don't speak Polish, but it, it, he just gave that to me as a gift, and I was like, that's pretty neat. And, one, two, three, four. Uh, is that, hold on. Monopoly Gamer, Animal Crossing, Standard, da, da. right, and Monopoly Rivals, which I would say, yeah, go for it. I mean, it, the Sonic one is only like 25 bucks, I think, and it's like, the, the reason I like Monopoly Gamer uh, Collector's Edition as well is because it comes with really nice little plastic Mario coins and little Mario figures, so for that alone, it was worth it for me. Um, I'd say, yeah, if you can find the Sonic one, it's, I mean, they were at, like, Walmart and GameStop and stuff, so you might be able to track it down. Monopoly is very cheap. It'll, it'll be, like, $25, probably. Um, but yeah, Monopoly Rivals, I would say, is the best version of Monopoly because it plays in, like, 10 minutes. It's super quick. I love that little Lemmy graffiti. It's going, blah. He's so cute. I love Lemmy, the cute links. Uh, wow, I've been going for quite a while. There's one thing with streaming Mario Kart is that it's like each race is really fun and exciting, but then when you look at the clock, it's like, man, I've played like several cups, several attempts. It must have been like uh, two hours, and you look at the clock and it's been like 40 minutes, and you're like, um, the, the bite-sized nature of this game makes it very, uh, very, um, very kind of plotting. Uh-oh, ooh, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, I'm going on the train. I'm going on the train. I'll see you later, guys. I'm going on the train. Oh, there's in drive. Got her. <laughs> Get him. Get the Yoshi. Um, yeah, Monopoly Rivals, it is two-player Monopoly. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Ah, uh, woo, I'm not doing as good this time. 
to be okay. But it, it's two player Monopoly. You just get each get a set of blue houses or red houses. You pick your color. And so instead of having the cards for the properties, you just have, um, you just plop a house down. Like when you land on a property, you drop a house on it. If you land on a property in a color set, you, if, if you land on uh, a property in a color set that, what was it? It's like if you land on someone else's property, you pay them rent, and rent is just, it's only like 50s and 100s. Like the, it's very simple math. You don't get all granular into like the singles. It's just like 50 or 100 or just a multiple of that. Um, you get, yeah, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but then if you land on one of your own properties and you don't own the full color set, then the other, the other one in the color set gets auctioned, I'm pretty sure. And if you own a full color set and you land on your own property, uh, you get to draw a chance or a community chess card of your choice. And they are wild. Some of them are like literally like just don't pay rent, don't pay rent, and rent. And but then some of them are like triple the rent, and it they stack. So it's like you can have like a triple, double, triple, triple, double, double, triple. Just like stack them up and have your opponent pay like friggin' twelve thousand dollars or something. It's hilarious. It's ridiculous. It plays super fast. It's very simple math. It doesn't feel as mean because it's like it. it it's like arm wrestling, right? It's like as soon as you get like an, uh, you gain like an inch, you just get that tiniest bit of leverage. It's pretty much over and you're gonna win. Like as soon as it starts tipping over. So similarly, it's like with that, it's like within a few rounds, you know pretty quickly who's gonna win. But you can play it unlike regular Monopoly where you just have to sit there for several hours when you know who already won. You can actually like, crank through and just get it done real quick and yeah when I first played it against my roommate's kid we just played like I don't know like a half dozen times in a row because he kept winning he won so many times so we kept playing until I could win at least once and it was just I was just yeah he won like five games in a row and the real thing the only real strategy you know, similar to regular Monopoly, the only strategy is in trades. But in this case, there's no trading because there's two players, so... Um, the only real strategy is in the auctions. And that kid is just incredible at auctions, I guess. Makes me... I want to get uh, QE, which is short for Quantitative Easing. It's a, it's a game... Which, I mean, I could probably just bootleg it. It doesn't seem like it's that complicated. Where basically you are all representatives of countries, basically, who have infinite money, right? You can just print as much money as you want. And so you are, uh, you are, oh, ah, dip. I dipped down in the tank. Oh, no. Uh, and so you're bidding on stuff. It's a pure bidding game. Like, that's the, the whole game. It's just auctioning. Uh, but you you can do any amount of money you want like from like literally you could just write like 15 quadrillion dollars and you do it but at the end whoever writes uh whoever spends the most money at the end of the game loses so you have to be able to win the most without being the person who spent the most and what this means is that uh most most bids end up being 70. And we're not sure why. But people seem to think that that's going to win when you can write any number that you want to. Or uh, a 421 is also one that gets bid a lot. Knowing that it's going to win. Um, yeah, I just... Oh God, I love board games so much. I know I'm saying that while I'm playing a video game. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I think board games are really cool. It's, video games are neat, and especially now it's like, 
there's so many interesting ideas that are happening in video games that never would have happened in like the early days when you had to you had to like there weren't a ton of tools and you had to like pay licensing to Nintendo for the cartridges and if you wanted your game out there you had to like sell physical copies and now it's like you can just post your game up on Steam and you're good but there's still the barrier to entry that you've got to do at least some amount of coding even if you find like you know Ruby on Rails or some similar like coding language thing that makes it super intuitive and easy to code you still gotta code it you know um, whereas with like tabletop you can do tabletop you just need like paper like as long as you have paper and scissors and like pencils you can just make a board game you know maybe not necessarily a good one because the, the best ones are generally uh, made by people who understand math really well and know how to chart stuff um, Rainer Knizia being the obvious example. He's like the guy. He's incredible. Because his games are all like the, the rules will be like two, three pages. Super simple. Super intuitive. Um, but they'll, they'll just be so... It's like the, the, the rules will be super simple. The rule set will be very basic. But the way that the rules cause people to interact makes for incredible games and that's just yeah that's just a because he is he's just a mathematician who loves games and just makes them all the time because he just sees something interesting about math and he's like oh i know how to implement that into a way that the layman can enjoy and i love that i love it so much i have a couple of his books um that i've been meaning to read one of them which is highly recommended is a dice game, dice games properly explained, where he just goes through like classic dice games and dice games that he has come up with, and these are all games that you can play with just like a standard set of like casino style, you know, d6, dice, and like paper and a pencil. Um, but he goes through like the history of dice games, and it's very interesting because dice games, for a lot a lot of history dice games were like the game like you know nowadays card games are like one of the more prevalent ones like poker and stuff but before cards dice were big because dice were super easy to make like you could just carve some dice out of wood and play or you could even just you know originally they would just play with like the knuckle bones of like creatures that they'd slaughtered which is a bit morbid now but that's how it was and yeah dice games just kind of fell out of popularity and it's so strange because they they were so big but then you still have stuff like liar's dice which in uh you know in uh the western world has fallen out of popularity but in in uh parts of asia liar's dice is still really huge if you know how to play and you're there, like, you can play with anybody. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't require knowing any language, so it breaks the language barrier. And it's just numbers. It's, it's good. It's good. And of course, that makes me think of Kaiji again. Which, if you have not, watch the movie Animal World. It's on Netflix. It's a Chinese... Uh, it's a Chinese live-action adaptation of the manga Kaiji. Uh, Ultimate Cyber Survivor. Or no. Gambling Apocalypse Kaiji? I can never remember the titles of the specific arcs. It's an adaptation of the first arc of Kaiji. Which is about a rock-paper-scissors tournament that is high stakes. Like, and, oh god, it's so good. If you liked Squid Game... Dude, Kaiji is, like, on another level. Like, it's not quite as, like, despair. Because it, there's not necessarily, like... It's not, like, a death game in the same way. Uh, it's high stakes. Like, people go into massive debt. And, like, yeah, if they, if they screw up, they get sent to the mines. 
for the company they're in debt to, and it, uh, I mean, that basically means death because it is not safe working conditions. Because they're, they're debt, or debt slaves, it's not legal. Um, but when Kaiji gets sent to the mines because he gets, he gets caught with all of his debt, uh, he breaks out by playing CeeLo, which is just a dice game. It's a super simple dice game where you just roll three dice, and depending on what you get, it's like one person is dealer, and everybody else, like, they roll three dice, and then everybody else rolls three dice. And they all, you know, see if they beat the dealer or not, and different payouts based on what you get. Um, but then, yeah, of course, because it's a thing like that, there's cheating involved, and how they're cheating, and how they combat that cheating. Oh, man. It's so cool. It's so cool. Read Kaiji, dude. Uh, there is... There is an anime, but it only covers the first two arcs. So the, the second season of the anime does cover the CeeLo game that I'm talking about. Oh, 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 I thought it was done. Can you just do that on this, on this uh, track? Because it feels like you're done for when you fall there, but you know what? You know what? You know what? Done for! Ah. Um. Uh. Yeah, the anime is pretty good. It's a bit dated now, but I think it was done by. Let's say. Bones? Bones or Madhouse? It was one of the big. The big, uh. Things. Because, yeah, Kaiji is a. Kaiji is a. Like, classic, classic manga at this point. It started in the 90s. And it's still going. It's, uh, they're in their sixth arc right now. Um, personally, I, I kind of fell off for a little bit. I'm, I need to catch up on Kaiji because I, I adore it. It is like my favorite manga. But the sixth arc, they really kind of like it's it's still cool. It's still pretty interesting what's going on. But it's like, ah, the thing I always loved was the games, and they're kind of. Mm, they're not so much in a game like the rules are a lot more nebulous at this point because it's more of a getaway thing so they're trying to escape and so while there is clever stuff happening it's all within like just like the real world social sphere and that's kind of neat and I appreciate it but it's just not what I want my favorite arc was arc um was hold on let me think it uh first arc second arc third yeah yeah the third arc is my favorite one um which is about mahjong which i didn't know like anything about mahjong uh wait is this the one i want i think those are the wheels i use no, maybe was it a different set? Roshan boy? That's silly. That's very silly. Uh, I guess it was. Huh. Or actually, I should go for this, because it's the tiniest loss of speed, but it's so much more traction and a decent amount more acceleration. Um, but yeah, I didn't know anything about Mahjong, which made it very confusing at first. But when I like took the time to figure it out and like play some Mahjong, dude... That that arc of Kaiji is incredible. Ah, oh, it's it, the the game, like the version of Mahjong they play. It's called Mine. It's like uh, Minefield Mahjong, I think, where it's like two players. This is not going to make any sense if you don't know Mahjong. But if I was explaining it to someone who knows Mahjong, it's um, uh, it's it's like the standard Mahjong. What's it called? Ranji, I think. Ooh, probably wrong on that. Um, 
It's the one where you could with Ron, right? Uh, where you can call Ron. And uh, it's basically, it's that Mahjong, but it's two players. And the idea is you have to, you have to, you have like a certain amount of time, like a minute, I think, like a really small amount of time to set up a hand that can win by Ron, right? You have to win by Ron, that's the, that's the rule. So you have a minute to set it up, then uh, once you have it set up, you each take turns discarding all of your other tiles, right? And if your opponent uh, plays, plays the tile that you need, you call Roan and you win, right? But, uh, and then depending on like what, what the hand was, you get a payout, you know, multiplier based on what you bet. Oh God, it's so, and it's like, it's so intense, right? Because then it means that like, even though I didn't know that much about Mahjong, once I understood that, it meant that uh, the whole time it's like, oh man, what tile, what tile are we looking for? I guess it was still at the time I was just like, I saw them like play a card or play a tile and then call Roan and then like show their hand. And I'm like, is that, is that a really good hand? They seem really upset that that was what the their opponent got. Is that it? I think that's a good hand. So it's not great if you don't know Mahjong. But it's uh God, it's so good. And the like mm, I don't wanna I don't wanna spoil it, but like the ending line that Kaiji says at the end of the match is just ooh. Oh, it's so good. Uh the the big caveat I will say with Kaiji if you get into it, Kaiji is super slow. So Super, super slow. Like, this is a manga. Like, they constantly, like, have to reiterate stuff and explain stuff. And they do it in interesting ways. Like, they come up with interesting visual metaphors for how they're feeling. But, uh, yeah, it's super slow. To the point that in part five, there's they're playing a game called One Poker, where it's basically, uh... It's basically like you play, you're just playing poker, but it's it's like one, um, uh, it's, it's only, I don't, it, you get a single card, uh, basically you play a single card, they're all standard, ace is the, uh, ace is high, and two beats Ace. Two loses to everything else, but it beats Ace, right? And so they just bet single, like, for single hands. But they're betting with lives, right? They're like, basically, uh, the amount of money that a man makes in his entire life is like this much. So we have these figurines representing the entire life, the entire working life of an adult person that we're gonna call lives, and that is like the minimum bet. Um, so here's the thing. It's a single card game, and it's poker, and there's literally one hand of this game that lasts for three volumes of manga. Not three chapters, which would already be pretty ridiculous. Three volumes that they spend on a single hand of deciding which card they're gonna play from the perspective that you're seeing right then, because it kind of swaps back and forth between, for each hand, it, like it'll change to the perspective of the other guy, so you never really know what's gonna happen. And yeah, three entire volumes dedicated to a single hand of just deciding which card to play, how much to bet, whether they're gonna fold, like it's, it, oh man, it's, it's so over the top, but it's so good. Like that entire three volumes, there was no point in it where I was like, man, this is boring. But the entire time I was like, dude, what's he gonna do? Like every page I was gripped. Hey, thanks for tuning in, Danny Dudes. You have a great rest of your night. Thanks for subscribing. 
I stream Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday with some like random ones here and there around this same time. So check it out and get to play Spider-Man on Friday. So come hang out. Uh, yeah, KG is just, it's so good. It's so suspenseful for a manga. It's like the first time I was ever reading something that actively had my heart racing. Like there is, I, uh, yeah, it, it was just so suspenseful. It's so good. Oh my God. Yeah, I gotta catch up on Kaiichi. There's probably a few more chapters now. I don't think they'll have finished it by now. Because the vibe I'm getting is that... I don't think they're going to end Kaiji. Because it's like been going for so long now. And it's still set in the 90s. Because, like, that's the thing is that... Uh, the last four parts... Right? The last four parts, it started in the 90s, and then, like, with each part, it was, like, a few months. But then, starting in part three, it has been over the course of, like, a couple months of in-story time. In fact, parts three, uh, parts three, four, and five all happen over the course of a single day. Which is crazy. Um, ah, oh, it's so good though. But yeah, it seems the the situation. I don't want to say exactly what's happening in the story right now because it it kind of spoils what's what happens in the previous parts. But the implication is that they Kaiji might finally. The thing with Kaiji is that it's like, it kind of talks about how like, what the desire for gambling is and why Kaiji and all these people he plays against are so addicted to gambling. Um, and it's not, it's not super glorifying, but it is kind of. Uh, get out of here with that wiggler car. Um... But, yeah, Kaiji never really wins, you know? It's like he'll win the game, but in the end he'll get screwed over in some way, or he can never really end up on top. But the implication right now is that he might finally be able to, but it's very tenuous, right? It's like there's a lot of things up in the air that could go wrong. It's been very intense. I think that, like, my theory is that it's gonna go badly. And they're gonna end up... Uh... They're gonna end up, like, messing up, right? God, and that's the thing, it's not even just Kaiji anymore. He has, like, two friends now that he met in, like, part three. Part... Th or no, part four. In part four... Part four was, uh was a, like him just observing a game. Like it was just Kaiji watching someone else in a high stakes game like that. Ah, oh, man. Ah, it's so good. I love Kaiji. I'm really jazzed to read some now. It's been so long. All right, I'm gonna finish up this cup and then take a break. I need to go grab some more water. My goal here is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. Oh, hey, Fuji's up there. I was wondering where he was at. I hadn't seen him. Also, these guys, these stilt shy guys, they're from Yoshi's Story, not Yoshi's Island. So, I do like this, uh, this update on the athletic theme from Yoshi's Island. It's a very good, very good track. Um, but yeah, no, my goal here is just to hit that question mark cloud.
Oh, there's Blart. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ah, oh, dropped a little too fast. Oh, somebody else got it. Yoshi got it. Bum, 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 bum. See, it's not optimal play to stay in first place. As satisfying it is, as satisfying as it is to be like, I'm in first, yeah! It's, uh, you know. Ha, ha. Um. Uh, as optimal as it is, or no, as, as satisfying as it is to stay in first, it, it makes you weak. Puts you vul it makes you vulnerable to the, the blue shells. Which are really the biggest issue you can run into in this game. Come on, come on. Ow, ow, ow. Ah, I missed it. I'm not counting that, you know, Yoshi got it. Is that in me? I'm not the Yoshi. Just because I'm green? Racist. Do, 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 do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, jeez, watch out for those guys. Ah! Skogoosh. That's so many bananas. So many bananas. Do, 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 do. Keep on keeping on. Gotta get, whoa! Oh, jeez, watch out, watch out. Ah. Oh, yep, see, there's the bank. All right, let me get this. Question mark, question mark, let me get it. Ah, oh, I just barely missed it. Oh, well, that's all right, that's all right. And... Bow. All right. Alright, we're gonna take a break. Let me just get over to my stream manager. There it is. Alright. And I'll leave y'all to see in the results while I go for a break. Okay, don't go anywhere. Don't touch that internet dial. I'll be our right back with more Mario Kart in just a minute, okay? Team everyone, and th
All right. I have return. Uh, Iggy is in 11th. JK, Iggy is in first. This Iggy, anyways. Oh, I almost swallowed my mint. Ah, oh, that's the worst. <laughs> um, another thing I'm really excited about is I'm finally going to get my new character demo made soon. Been meaning to get it done since, like, last August. It really took me forever to get, uh... Get everything set up for it, but Friday, Friday, I'm recording it with my uh, with my coach, and we're gonna put together a fun demo with a schmack schmattering of characters, uh, quite a few of which have actually uh, I developed here on the stream, like the Baroness from. Card shock if you ever watched that playthrough. Still still really adore that character. And god, Card Shark, that was another great game that I wish had gotten more uh gotten more traction. Cause that I I loved that playthrough. There's so many interesting characters, so much opportunity to do voices. And just the gameplay. So fun. So fun. Go and check that out on the Archive channel. But, um... Oh. Nice try. Oh, what was that little move? That's cute. What? Uh, but yeah. I'm gonna have to set things up for it, which is tricky, right? Because I, I got it set up for around noon. I usually, I mean, I try and get up by 9. My, my alarm is set for 9 or 10. But I end up sleeping through it most days, so, uh, yeah. Gotta be sure to get up at a decent time, because I'm gonna have to set it up. Uh, my current recording setup, which you can see in old streams, it's the same one I use for streaming, really, is uh, sitting at a desk, which is fine for commercial copy and stuff, but it's like, it would be nice to be able to stand up to record more often, and, um, oof. Uh, yeah, it's just not quite as conducive. But I have things shut up now. It's just tricky, you know. You gotta hit record and then you gotta stand back up, and this is just a little bit frustrating. Boing, boing, boing. Love that part. Um, ooh, let's go up this way. Um, there's like my the the boom arm that I keep my mic on. I can almost stretch to my full height, but I'm a little too tall for it, which is unfortunate. Plus, you want, if you can, you really want to have a down mic to have it, like, above your mouth pointing down so that, you know, you get uh, a lot more of the, like, just now I moved it from a, an up mic to a down mic, and now you can get so much more of not just my the voice coming out of my mouth, but also like all of the resonance happening in my chest and throat. And that is always very lovely to have, and it means that you can get really deep on the mic, and you can get some interesting sounds that way. And it's pretty neat. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the big thing, is like, I can get it to be an up mic, with the boom arm, but it's not quite long enough. I just gotta get a better boom arm. I got the cheapo, like, $30 one. There's, like, a million of them. They're all the same. Like, I'm pretty sure they're all literally identical with different brand names. Uh, the one I got was called Newer. It's N-E-E-W-E-R. But they're all, like, $30, and they're all cheap and crappy, and, uh, you know, the metal, 
where it sits into the, the clip is like all it grinds away into powder and it sucks and the springs are super loud and creaky yeah I hate that I want to get like a proper a proper pneumatic one but they're like over a hundred bucks and it's like it's a lot of money that's like two board games that I could buy instead but at the same time it'd be a business expense so that wouldn't be the worst you know I can mark it off on my taxes Um, 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 um. Whoop. Go, 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 go. Yep, there we go. Yeah, just kind of grinding away through these hundred CCs. Hundred CC pretty easy, but you still gotta do it. Oh! Oh, they're dead! They killed him! They've been murdered! Oh, jeez. Oh, goodness. Oh, gosh. He's dead. They're dead. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know why I don't do a down mic more often, because there's... With this boom arm, I can any time. I just uh, don't. I don't know. But yeah, you can probably hear, like, uh, there's a lot more resonance happening versus when I had it pointed pointed up and it was only pretty much grabbing what was coming out of my mouth. I don't know. Does it sound better? Does it sound worse? What do you guys think? This is the, this is the down mic, and this is the up mic, right? What do you think? Which sounds better? Up mic? Or down mic? Down mic sounds deeper. Yeah. The, well, yeah, that's the thing, because it's... It's not even that it's necessarily bassier. It's that it's literally just capturing more of the sounds resonating in your chest and your throat. That if it's pointed up, it's just like all of that is just going passed underneath the mic. Same reason why with shotgun mics in movies, they usually point them from above, because they're trying to get the entirety of the talent's voice. Whoop, here we go. Whoop. Wow. I like this Wario Stadium level. I never played... Mario Kart is like one of my favorite series, but I never really played the GB... Uh, not the GB, the... GameCube, GCN. That's what I was thinking. I never really played the GameCube one. Uh, I never played the Game Boy Advance one with other people, because I never had the link cable. Never had the DS one. Never had uh, the Wii one. Uh, never had the 3DS one. I bought Smash for some reason, even though I'm not really into fighting games. I mean, I loved... I loved Smash on N64, but I was always terrible at it. So I was like, maybe I should get back into it. And, uh, yeah. I, I ended up being very bad at it, so... Yeah, I don't know. Hey, get the dried bones. I got him. I took him out. This crud is so good. Games I want to come to Nintendo Switch Online, right? Uh, Donkey Kong for the original Game Boy. Um, Donkey Kong 64 for the the Nintendo 64. Ah, you butternut. Squid. 
you absolute strike. I ought to find a way to rip 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 Whoop, there we go. But yeah, that's a tip for any of you out there doing vocal recording. If you want if you want a little more resonance, if you want it to sound extra full, switch to a down mic. That's why whenever you see uh, videos or pictures of people in studios, in like Hollywood recording studios, it's usually a down mic. Sometimes it'll be an up mic. But, you know, whichever. They also usually have it literally like the mic will be upside down. Uh, I have an end address, Electro Voice RE20 mic, so it doesn't it doesn't end up being upside down necessarily, but it is a damn mic, right? That's the thing; it's capturing a lot more of the rumble that I have, because it th that's how I refer to it, because I I have like uh, I get acid reflux, which ends up affecting your voice. And it means that you basically have to work harder because you'll get granulomas, you know, little like, little sort of like clusters of white blood cells around on your vocal cords. They'll make you kind of raspy, so you have to work harder with the muscles of your voice to kind of like close hard enough to get the sound you want. So, it like, um, so yeah, it means that I, my voice gets tired really quick. And it also gets very rumbly very quick, which you can hear, you can hear in there. Yeah, there's like extra rumbly-ness, which sounds, it makes me sound a lot more butch than I really am, since I have the, the petite little boy voice. DK64, yeah, I played the the hell out of DK64, and I really only ever got to, like, the third level. Because, like, A, the fourth level, even though I unlocked it, I never wanted to play because I was terrified of swimming in games. Thanks, Bander kazooie with the shark. Um, even though in that game, you can't even drown in that game. For They, like, literally don't even have, like, they didn't even make, like, air a mechanic. You, you can just swim forever, you're fine. But yeah, I'm just terrified because it, you have so little control in the water, you know? But uh, yeah, I never really played the fourth level. And the third level got really scary with that, like, jack-in-the-box boss. He's spooky. And let's, let's not beat around the bush. The level design sucks. <laughs> like, the level, the ideas behind the levels are cool, but the fact that you kind of have to repeat every single part of every level. Like, they're, they're, you have to reroute through the level with every Kong. Because they have the Kong-specific items and Kong-specific bananas. And that's... that's not great. Like, I, I replayed it recently on an emulator, and I was having an okay time, you know? I, I got through a lot of it. But then I just, I hit the fourth level and there's just, there's just so many hallways that you just have to run down with one Kong and then run all the way back, switch Kongs, and then run back down again. And it's just, it's just torturous. It's so tedious. It's like 100%ing that game is a nightmare. Casually, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun casual and it's, it's a great game to just run around in because it's so big and open and there's so many interesting things to see. And every area has something going on. But yeah, that's... Oh, man. Oh, what the... the game, let me go in the, the game. Oh, well. <laughs> nope! No, Singapore! Where is this Bangkok? I can't remember. Nope. Ah, uh, no! Link, no! Oh, are you kidding me? Right at the end? No! No! You have to replay this whole cup. Ah! Ah, I got... I got too complacent. Oh, maybe, actually. 
Ooh, it's gonna be close. Can I trip him? Yes! Ha-ha! Yeah, I mean, I even made a point of it in my uh, video about Ocarina of Time. It was it was specifically a response to the Ocarina of Time uh, sequelitis. Um, about how, like, I loved that game as a kid and I played it all the time, but it was still real bad. It was very poor, like, a, a DK64, that is. That game's pretty bad. Um... Yeah, yeah, if you played it with a friend and passed it around, it probably wouldn't be too bad, but it's just... Ah, uh, DK64 over Banjo-Tooie. Hmm. That's fair. I can almost 100% Banjo-Tooie, you know, aside from the last Canary Mary race. Can't do it, man. I did it once on N64 as a kid, and that's pretty much all I got. Um... But I would say Banjo Tooie. I'd say Banjo Tooie is better than DK64, if just because it's a little more cohesive. It's it's certainly not great. I will I will concede it's not great. But I still love it, man. I have more nostalgia for Banjo Tooie because Banjo Kazooie was like. Uh one of my favorite games, and then Banjo-Tooie, it just introduced so much more stuff. It's incredible that Banjo-Tooie was even on N64. Like, I see that, I'm like, this had to have been a, like, this looks like it was a GameCube game. It's a massive, massive world. So many big, interesting ideas that feel like they shouldn't work on N64, and they kind of don't. Like, especially in some of those levels, flying around, the slowdown on N64 is ludicrous I don't know if you've played it recently but yeah it's like the slowdown on flying is just out of control but if you play it on like Xbox the the remake it's really 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 nice uh, uh, uh. Well, yeah, that's the thing, is that DK64 irks me with that even more. Because, like, Banjo-Kazooie does that stuff, for sure. And it's really cool how it, like, connects the world. But, like, DK64 is, like, actively, you cannot ever finish anything but in just one run. You always have to miss something. And that, like, playing it now, it, that makes me lose my mind. I cannot like just go through one crowd and just be like oh you just can't get these bananas this time you just have to remember and it's like i am gonna forget and that really frustrates me so yeah banjo tui it's like i can be like oh well i can't do this yet but i know i'll be able to do it soon and yeah i'll have to remember it and that frustrates me but it only frustrates me a little whereas with dk64 it's like just constant frustration of just like, nope, you just can't do it. You can't do it right now. No, don't do it. Can't do it right now. Nope, can't do it. And it's like, oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Ow, oh, I threw it onto the bridge. Oh, yeah, Yoshi? Oh, yeah, that's how you want to be, Yoshi? Oh, what the? I didn't even go off that hard. Eh. Oh, come on, man. Short wasn't meant for you. This short was a man for you. You know, Captain Jack Sparrow. Ha ha! I only got second at least. Ah, yeah, we're gonna have to quit out and try again. Uh, I'm gonna go to probably 10:30, I think. I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to like, get ready for bed by 11. 
just so that I can get up at decent times, but not great about that. I always get caught up in like watching something on YouTube and then I watch too much. Or what I've been trying to do is like um like my my bedtime routine starts at 9 really because it's like I have to uh, stop eating by 9 so that my acid reflux while I'm sleeping isn't an issue. Uh, the doctors say like 2 hours but I've found that I need at least 3. Like, that's just me personally. Um, and... Uh... What is it? Um... Uh, da 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 Yeah, and then... So, at... By nine, I stop eating. Uh, but I can still, do, like, do, like, a mint. Or like, you know, something small, maybe some tea, and I still drink water. Then, uh, ooh, ah, ha, 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 ha. Ooh Um. Then. Uh, starting at 10, I don't, uh, it, uh, nothing, right? Just water. So that by 11, it'll have been an hour since I had anything on my teeth. So that I can brush my teeth, take some melatonin, do my allergy nasal spray, put on some pajamas, put on some chill music, light a scented candle, and uh, and read a book. And that works for the most part. It's like you, I got you brush your teeth, I floss, because I I, get, I had gingivitis, so I gotta be sure to floss because. If I had, I wouldn't have had ginger vice. <laughs> it was a very expensive thing to fix. Um, so, uh, uh da, 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 da. and then yeah, I wait 20 minutes before I rinse. You're supposed to leave the toothpaste on for a little while. No, right at the flipping oh, donkey cog. Donkey Kong! Um. And then, yeah, while I'm waiting 20 minutes, I just read, read. Get, get away from screens for a little bit, just read. And then when I get, get into bed, um, I put on, like, a YouTube video or something. Or, like, a podcast, um, Rob Paulson's audiobook. That's a that's a good one. Uh and then yeah, I wear like an eye mask to make sure that I'm in total darkness. Um see 150 is where I start having problems. It's always 150 cc. But the problem is with that is that sometimes I get too wrapped up in a book. It's too exciting and I just read like the other day I read my book, instead of reading for just like 20 minutes, I read until like 3 in the morning. Because it was just so good. Oh my god, it's such a good book. Uh, it's The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. Which is, it's about uh, a pair of Jewish cousins who, like in the 40s, made a comic book called The Escapist. And it's, uh... Yeah, it's just like this incredible story of how they're trying to fight back against the Nazis with, uh, through their art. And it's, it's like 600 pages. I'm almost at the end. I'm in the 500s. And it goes some crazy places. And it, oh, God. It's so heartbreaking and so beautiful and just so, such a good story. It gets really dark at points, though, to be clear. If you if you read it, it like it's really really dark at points. Like it's not like gory or anything necessarily, but it like really it goes into some like really twisted places. Who is Yoshikaga Kira? 
I don't know this guy. I was just, I try very hard to have like a decent night routine. And then, even then, I still, uh, I still have pretty, pretty big trouble. Are you kidding me? Again? Right at the end, again. Dude. Ah. But. Yeah, I still end up wait uh, sleeping, sleeping too long. Oh, what what arc is he from? I see. Hold on, I'm gonna. Yeah, this is 1080p. That's why it keeps getting overloaded. I usually stream from 720p. Yeah, JoJo is one that I'm gonna get into eventually. We started watching it, and like, it's, I don't know, I guess it's just the, the first, the first arc. Like, it seems like it really picks up when you get to the stands and things get really crazy, but as it is now, it's a little too just like, middle of the road shown in in that first part and also not for nothing but I'm more inclined to finish one piece because uh, I I got like I read th up through Sanji's arc in a uh, in a uh, one piece and it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I watched bits of the next Chopper's art um, after that. But then, yeah, I don't know anything about, like, Burke or Frankie or uh, Bit Fish, 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 Robin. I didn't even meet Robin. It's a very good series. And I would say it is, like, peak anime design. Like, I love the way the characters look in One Piece. I think they look awesome. And I think the anime looks really good. Like, it's got beautiful, like, hand-drawn backgrounds. Oh, so lovely. But, of course... Ah, poor kids. Poor kids really guffed it up. So you gotta be able to find. You can. I'm pretty sure the one that's on Hulu, the Japanese dub at least, is the uh, is not, you know, uh, 4K mangled or anything. But it's hard to say. All right, I'm doing pretty good. That's the thing is I keep screwing it up on this, and this is just the first of four tracks. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, that's not good. Oh, they're on my tail. I actually got a tail, so it's. It's bird. Oh, nope. Nice try. That's what they've been doing every time. The third time they tried to do it. I mean. That's good, but I'm also, I'm not planning on watching the dub anyways. Ah. Like, I know a lot of other voice actors got into voice acting because of anime. And so I don't hate every dub. I, I'm i fine with the, with the Dragon Ball dub, or I should say the one that has Sean Schemmel, the, the most current one. I don't know the difference between the dubs very well. Uh, and like, you know, I, I watched a lot of anime on TV, and it was all, like, dubbed. So, it's not the worst. Cowboy Bebop, that's, like, the one time where I'm like, that dub is better than the actual sub. 
or rather the, the Japanese dub, I should say. Um, but... Oh, it's also... I don't know, man. There's just no, no time where I see a dub where I'm like, that's great. I'm just like, that's... That's pretty good. That's better than I expected, I guess. You know, I watched a, a decent chunk of the first season of the NHA dubbed. I was like, yes, it's pretty good. It just never matches, you know? Like, the, the way that Americans, or rather, I should say Westerners, because a lot of it's from Canada, uh, the way that they, uh, or I guess now most of it's from Texas, because of Funimation, you know, monopolizing everything. Uh, whoop. It's, uh... Oh, come on! You got me? You got me in that? Um... It's just, our, uh, uh, most of our acting is rooted in vaudeville, right? And in, like, the Stanislavski mes methods and an actor prepares and all that. Whereas, Japanese acting is rooted in, like, kabuki theater. And it's just... And that's the thing to understand, is that animation is a form of acting. It's acting through your, your drawings, right? So, the the animation that they do... Oh, oh, come on, man. Dang it. Uh... The, the animation... Alright, we're gonna give it another run here. The, the animation that they do is one style of acting, and then the dub that we put over it is a different style of acting. And yeah, a lot of modern dubs, by my understanding, they're basically like, just pay attention to what the original actor did and try and... try and copy exactly what they were doing. It's like, okay. But also... It's just not as good. Wow, this screen you can really see the smudge filter that I put over. Which I'm glad works on stream. I was nervous when I was thinking about it, like, is this gonna actually work? But yeah, no, the like, dusty arcade screen totally works. just trying to give the the illusion of like watching my gameplay through a dusty old CRT in the back of an abandoned arcade I think it comes across pretty well I'm very very proud of my current like layout and everything that I set up for Lee I think it's pretty cool it's pretty creative there's lots of nice little Easter eggs for everybody, you know. I like uh, if you look down on the bottom around my socials. I have a uh, um. There's two little Polaroids tacked along, like to the the bulletin board on the side, that are uh, drawings of our cats. The the one uh, leopard, the one on the left. It's, it's supposed to be like, you know, when you take a Polaroid of somebody who's, like, doing something underhanded to be like, Hey, don't let this guy in. Don't accept checks from this guy, etc. Um, but for him, it's just don't trust. Because it was supposed to be don't trust this man. But then they couldn't fit it. And then uh, our other cat, Dakota, the uh, orange one on the right, it says too old. She is very old. So, so old. She's hanging in there, though. She's hanging in. So, she's an old gal. Oh, jeez. Ah, no. No, Wario. No! Right at the dip dang end again. Ah, once again. So, yeah, that's a cute little Easter egg, I think. I don't know if you can even really see that on most versions, because it's they're pretty small.
Yeah. Okay. I, I meant to quit out. But yeah, you can definitely see on this screen, it's like a, all smudgy with dust, and then there's like spots where somebody drew with their finger through the dust. Uh, you know what? Instead, I'm just gonna finish out this cup. Just for the practice. And we'll call it a night. I think that'll be good. Yeah, two and a half hours. It's not a super juicy stream. I usually... I'm, I'm aiming for at least three hours on any stream, but... I started a little late. Yeah, my hope would be to have started at seven so that I would get... Uh, like three and a half hours, but... It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Um. Which generally tabletop Thursday has been pushed to Wednesday because I'm doing an improv class on Thursdays at eight o'clock. So I can't can't do the stream. Uh that night anymore. I mean, it's over by like 9, but it's like, that's so late to start streaming. I was starting at 9 for a while because I was, I had a really late schedule, but I'm trying to, trying to fix that. Um. But. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, this one's tough because the quarters are so tight. They can really get on you. They can really get on you. Wow. Wow. This is the noises that they make. These crazy cats. Are these crazy nuts? They make noises like a fire in a fire. Now get out of here. It's my, uh. It's my Don Carnage. Don Carnage? From Tail Spin? Which was. I, I don't think he said it, but I'm pretty sure uh, Jim Cummings was trying to do, like, a Desi Arnaz, like, you know, Ricky Ricardo from I Love Lucy kind of thing there. There's Don Carnage. This is how much I'm loving you. If I was a me, meeting you, I would be jealous of you for getting to meet me. That's how much I love you. Now get out of here, you crazy nut. Express. Okay. Doesn't sound quite correct. I'm not much of an impressionist. You know, I don't really do other people's characters. I prefer to create my own characters. Although, as Emperor Shark will attest, I do an all right brain impression. I can't do the muffle right now because I don't have a free hand. My brain is pretty good. And in fact, on Shake, which is unfortunately still invite only, but I'm building up something of an audience on there, I just created a station, which is sort of like a, a series of you know, a, a basically like themed stuff. Um, of, the, the, I call them the Bane voicemails, where the idea is that he's just calling different villains or people in the uh, the Batman universe and just saying some wild stuff. Uh, one recently I did was like, uh, he was calling Clayface to tell him that he had got him an audition to try out for the Dolly Parton part in a stage production of Steel Magnolias. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's the thing? What happens if someone takes off your mask? It would be very painful for you. Well, the uh, yeah. You merely adopted the darkness. I was. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was born in it. I was bred in it. I didn't see the light until I was a man, and by then it was blinding. <laughs> I 
I need to get more people on Shake. I only get three invites, but, uh... Yeah, I used, uh... I've used one for Wade Preston Hunt, who does my awesome intro. And I, I have two more. I gave them to people. But the one is only on Android, so can't do it yet. Because it's only iOS. And the other hasn't said anything, so that's... Mm, you know, that's... Mm, yeah, whatever. Sip out. Gotcha. Gotcha. All Luigi Pinball is pretty good. I understand why this one. Jeez. Going back a long ways, John Tron's top 10 Mario Kart tracks was like his first Halloween special, I think. Or maybe it was top 8 or something. I don't remember. It was very early, John Tron. And now, ugh, now that guy's gone mask off about being racist. And I know, he tried to explain it later, like, uh, I actually meant this or this. It's like, that doesn't... Doesn't... No, the fa- you said what you said, dude. I don't know, you brought out data points that are absolute horseshit. S excuse my French. I try not to really swear on my screen anymore, but... That's what it was. Like, if you see that Destiny stream, which Destiny himself has also done mask off of being a total friggin' piece of garbage. Just because he d dunked on, you know, he ducked, dunked on John, but like, he is himself a very, uh, not a leftist, but a liberal. Which the distinction is clear. Uh, to be clear, leftist means someone who wants social progressive change, for the most part, you know, to oversimplify. Um, uh, whereas liberal is someone who wants progressive or wants change, uh, but within the confines, right? They don't want to change the system. They just want to make things within the system better, which is if the system is broken, doesn't make any sense. But that's just that's where a lot of centrists sit at, and really on a level. Republicans are also liberal, right? They're just not very good at, at being liberal because they aren't progressive. So, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm very confused by their mindset just because it's like, not to get too political, but it's like, they, they want everything to stay as it is, but it's also like, you guys know that everything is the way it is because of, like, centuries of like advancement and progress right like you can't just stop it i don't get it whoa uh-oh uh-oh but uh yeah that's the thing is like john tron's data points they was using were all dog like the the one it's like oh more, more, what was it he said like blacks poor blacks get, or rich blacks get arrested more than poor whites or something like that but like that thing of like uh, black people get arrested more, it's like yeah, but that doesn't mean they did more crimes. You you're so close to understanding it. That means that they got arrested, and in fact, most of them get, you know, let off of those charges because it was BS. I don't know, professional J. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I, I watch a lot of content, leftist content. Uh, I would recommend, if you are interested in that stuff, watch Thought Slime on YouTube. Thought Slime has a lot of great videos that explain very well a lot of these concepts. Um, and yeah, I used to watch John Tron all the time. He was like one of my favorite guys. I mean, I was like early Game Grumps. Like, I was super into John Tron and super into Ego Raptor. So when they came together for Game Grumps, it was like dream come true. I was there day one and I watched them religiously up through like 2015. But yeah, it sucks that he's not a cool dude. But let's not bring the mood down, you know? There are bad people out there, but there's just as many cool people. And I like to think that all y'all listening are cool. And I do my best to be cool. Don't always manage, but you know, I do my best. I get upset sometimes, but I try to be chill. 
And uh, with that, we're going to end the stream there. So, cool people on the rise. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Cool People. Uh, 14-ish? No, it was 2013. Because they started the channel in 2012. John was only on for about a year. And then, yeah, when... Yeah, I think it was a, a, almost exactly a year that John left. And that shocked everybody. Nobody expected it. But in retrospect, it's probably for the best. Because John... John made Aaron so legitimately mad and he he just was a bad influence on Aaron he made, turned the whole thing very frat boy like and stupid whereas when Danny came in the fact that he was chill and like a little more mature you know he still can do immature jokes but like he he really like was a good influence on Aaron and their dynamic is just so much better so I think it was a good thing that John left, frankly. Even though I will go back and watch some of the John era stuff, it's like, nah, it's just not as good as what they, they were able to do. Anyways, that's the end of the stream tonight. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're gonna raid over to someone, but please take the time to check out my socials. Uh, oh, let me type them. Check out my socials, check out, uh, or no, wait. I think I did. Nope, there it is. Took it a second. Yeah, Sonic 06 is pretty good. Hey, thanks, uh, Jason. I didn't even realize you were hanging out. Thanks for tuning in, man. And yeah, I I hope everything's going good with you, dude. Um, and yeah, I try and stream as much as I can. And I, I try and be as entertaining as I can. So, uh, yeah, yeah, be sure to follow, subscribe, check out the socials, and let's see who we're gonna raid over to. Uh, I wonder if Twitchy Jason went live since they were watching earlier. Wow, a lot of people streaming on a Wednesday. Hmm. Yellow Jacket, Dex, uh, Daxman, maybe. Pencil. Darastrix. Darastrix is playing Sea of Thieves. Yeah, totally. I really appreciate it, Jace. Um, I know you, yeah, you'll lurk a lot and everything, so I, I really appreciate the support. This is still, despite best efforts, this is still a very small stream, but everybody who does show up, I really appreciate y'all, because I do this to have the love for the, the actual art form just like making making my stream constantly better improving the stream trying to come up with fun stuff to do and uh, I'm gonna do some more stuff with viewers soon I think yeah especially like now that I saw words on stream over on Jace's channel and in fact let me shout out Jace because Jace is super cool and is going through some stuff so definitely go support Definitely go support the stream there. You know, watch the VODs and stuff. Or whatever you can do. Toss some subscribes and, and tips and all that business. Um, yeah. I I put in a lot of work. But it's, it's worth it. It's a fun time. I really enjoy it. And it's an excuse to play games, which I don't really have time for all that often. Alright. We're going to stream over to Darastrix. Hold up. Oop. I gotta move the mic forward so y'all can hear me. Let's see if I can do it from OBS. It doesn't always work. Because it'll get kind of caught up in some stuff. Slash read their restricts. Um. Okay, it. No, yeah, it brought up the raid. But the dialogue. Dialogue to actually click right now hasn't loaded in, which is what tends to happen. That's fine. I can do it from uh, from the app. I just got to open up my phone. Here we go. All right. Thank you all so much for joining in for the stream anniversary. Three more years. Three more years. Probably more than that. I'm just going to keep streaming. You know, whether anybody's watching or not, I just do it for the fun of it. Uh, but yeah, let Darastrix know I sent you. Have a great Rest of your day. We'll see y'all on Friday for more Spider-Man. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.